The network is not done with these sister-in-laws. The one who has hinted at returning in the future will be appearing on the next season of the spinoff. The other one will be back eventually in some capacity. Oh, and the other sister and sister-in-law who once made a comeback to the show, she's been approached as well, but declined. Welcome to Cocktails and Gossip, the podcast where we drink cocktails, but you better believe we're going to spill the tea. We chat reality TV, celebrity blinds, and the hottest tea from bravoandcocktails.com. And as always, it's all alleged and just for fun. We do not verify our blinds. I'm B, And I'm Amanda. Let's get into this week's tea. What's up, cocktailers? Hey, cocktailers. So, okay, B, we got some news this week that we had kind of speculated about, but didn't have confirmation on. So what what's happening with the Summer House crew? You know, I almost I we almost spoke about this on the pod last week. And I said to you, you know what, because we spoke about it off air. I was like, you know what? I feel like it's I'm going to get confirmation this week. So let's hold it. And I don't know if I regret that or not. But Listen, the reality is we got confirmation and neither party has denied it. So sadly, because I liked them together, Danielle from Summer House and her boyfriend Robert split. So they were together at BravoCon. And then I noticed shortly after he went to Italy, which in and of itself isn't odd because he was writing like food research. And, you know, since he's a chef, it could have totally been a work trip. What kind of I found curious was, I mean, it was a little odd that she didn't go for any of the trip, right? Because if it was a work trip, I mean, if my husband was going to Italy, I definitely would try to pop (laughs) in for a few days. But it was that he wasn't tagging her at all. And they're very much like a couple that tagged each other on social media. So, okay. But then he gets back and they have a meal together and she posts something like still researching. So I'm like, all right, maybe, you know, I'm looking too much into it. Yeah. Then the next week, it's Thanksgiving. He goes wherever he lives. I, I don't know. It's wherever Skyline Chili originated because oh, he was like- Cincinnati or somewhere so, in okay. Ohio. Yeah. So he goes there and she stays in New York. So now you just were apart for a couple of weeks for this big trip and now you're spending the holidays apart. So that kind of confirmed for me. And they were not posting other than that one meal. There were no posts together, no tagging each other. So sure enough, we get an email from- Somebody from his town in Cincinnati, Ohio, wherever he lives, saying that they broke up. Probably this person heard it over Thanksgiving break, right? What I hear is it's amicable and like it's all good. But because of his work, you know, he lives half the year in Aspen, half the year in Montauk because he works at those fancy snow lodge or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. They just decided to end it, I guess. So I totally think it could be a situation of, I don't know, maybe split up and then they realize that they miss each other and get back together and ultimately get engaged. I could see it going in that direction. I hope it does. They seemed very happy together. And either way, I want what's best for her and I trust her decision. She looks healthy and happy and thriving and she's at events every night and, you know. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's a bummer. I think, you know, she's, she's a smart, girl and you know it could be too like she also strikes me as somebody who knows what she wants you know and and maybe maybe it's one of those things where she just sees the writing on the wall that like it would be really hard to be married to a chef you know that you don't have a lot of evenings home or out together it's very physically demanding and exhausting on the chef you know and especially with him you know, living in a completely different state half the time. I mean, I could see why they would amicably come to the conclusion that things aren't going to work. It's fun. Like, I even was thinking this afternoon, I went, I stopped at the pizzeria (laughs) before we recorded because I was like, let me get my kids a pizza so they don't start texting me that they're hungry because Amanda and I deal with a lot of that guys while we're recording we deal with our children even though their fathers are next to them somewhere in the house they are texting us in our closets I'm sure all the mamas can relate and I was thinking to myself because it's a pizzeria and I know you know I know the family the the boys go to school with my kids and I thought to myself like it must be such a hard life to be married to a restaurant owner yeah I mean 
first of all, it's every day of the week, but it's also weekends. And, you know, when you have a party or a wedding or just an event, often you have to go by yourself because right. your spouse is working and the hours, unless you're a stay at home person, the hours would be opposite, right? Because like the pizzeria, oftentimes they don't have to get there till 10 a.m. So you'd have that time in the morning. But if you have a nine to five, you're at work while your spouse is, you know, it's hard. Yeah. Nobody wants to have quality time with their spouse at six in the morning either, you know? And so that's, that's, that's tough. You know, I, I can, I just, I was thinking about when my kids were really, really little and you're just like in the thick of it to never have a break in the evenings. I mean, that's, that's just, that's tough. So yes. it could just be one of those sad, but practical decisions. We mm -hmm. don't know. But then, so a couple of days after, you know, all this kind of went down, Lindsay posts a picture and w had a caption that said, karma's going to get ya." So a lot of, I shared it and honestly, it was a beautiful picture and I just often share things just for whatever. I got flooded and people were like, wait, is this aimed at Danielle? Now, honestly... That would be very low. I do not see Lindsay doing that. I think that there has to be, unless this fallout is, I don't know, like unless somehow Danielle, like it really insulted her relationship with Carl or like, you know what I mean? Like did something, unless the fallout somehow is different than just, I don't know. I just can't see. Like, why would Lindsay want to write Karma's going to get... If anything, I think it was more towards the Winterhouse cast because, you know, Austin was talking about how she grabbed his private part on the wedding and they're all speculating when were her and Carl, you know, official. So I feel like it was towards that. I do not believe it was towards Danielle. I think that would be, first of all, from a PR perspective, that's a bad look. Like, fans... Danielle, people love Danielle. So why yeah. would she want, you know, that I just think it's cold. I, I don't believe it was that. Well, I think, I mean, Lindsay seems to be having some beef with a lot of people. Like, well, let's light up the suspects of who else it could be. Because well, I feel like I, we, so now Austin, she's in, who was one person I was thinking of, right? Yes. And now she's in the press mad at Jason because of Winter House. We saw him approach her talking about her miscarriage. Uh, you know, about how she talked about it on Summer House, but he wasn't even talking only about that. He was saying, like, you were quoted in the press and, like, why wasn't I asked my opinion? What yeah. she's saying is she feels like he's trying to stay relevant by bringing this up at Winter House because he has no storyline. I don't know. I find, to me, this is, it's a touchy subject. It's her body, right? Yeah. She is saying she did tell him she was going to talk about it and, you know, she feels like he had a heads up. So, <sighs> and then there's Amanda and Kyle, which we've been talking about for the last few weeks because of the watch what happens live thing. And guys, this is something else Amanda and I have talked about off air. I am trying to get a confirmation here. I haven't been able to. I am aware that Carl has not traveled since the watch what happens live fallout with Amanda and Lindsay. I am also aware that in his bio, it says lover boy investor. According to you guys, it used to say his job title as well. I don't, honest, you know, I don't stalk profiles and remember well, so I'll take your word for it. I have asked around. Nobody really knows if he's still working for them. I mean, so I feel like he must be in some, maybe he's just not traveling right now. I don't think he quit altogether. Maybe they, maybe his role, maybe he said, you know what? I don't want to be on the road all the time. You guys go on the road. I did it last year. Wow. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's, it, it, if things got bad, really bad off the scenes, like it could be that Kyle and Amanda let him go. I mean, there's, there's so many possibilities and we just, we're just speculating completely at this point. But I mean, Lindsay, back to Lindsay and her beef. That. I don't see Kyle doing that to him. Yeah, I would hope not. I don't see that. I would really hope not because, yeah. Um, but when we've got, we've got, it could be Jason, so it's suspect one, <laughs> Kyle and Amanda, Austin. Austin. Or it could be a combo of all of them. Like, I'm happy. And you want to know what? Maybe it's not Listen. that sinister. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it could just be. First of all, it was a Winter House picture, right? So yeah. that means it was about Winter House. Duh. 
one plus one equals two. I just realized that. Hello, earth to me. (laughs) But the reality of it is they all want to be relevant. Okay. Yeah. Lindsay back in the press talking about the miscarriage and Jason, you know, I mean, I get it. Mama's got to eat, you know, and she's doing what she's got to do. Nobody does it better than her. I mean, because she has a PR background. (laughs) Exactly. And the other reality is, is that until there's a wedding and a pregnancy and a move in together, her and Carl are pretty boring, which is a good thing. Yeah. They have a nice, stable relationship, which equals snooze fest. Yeah. That's not the thing reality TV is made of. Is she big enough? Do you think, Amanda, do you believe that Lindsay is a big enough star to command a spinoff? Like for the wedding or like a, sh- a whole show? I could see maybe a wedding. Maybe yes. a wedding. I could see maybe like a wedding special. Although Kyle and Amanda, I guess that was wrapped into the show. I don't know. I I don't think. I don't see a cool her show would a be. Show. I don't. I don't believe she still has her PR business. But a cool show would be her as the mama hen, and then like all the little younger PR, not younger, but you know what I mean, like yeah. her PR team. Like, that would be a cool show. And then we'd get glimpses of Carl and her life. Like, I could see that spinoff. But again, I don't know if she still has that PR company. Yeah. I agree. And I don't know how big it is if there are people working for her. But, like, remember, who's the person I'm thinking of? Lizzie Grubman. Oh, yeah. Remember when Jacqueline's daughter, Ashley, interned for Lindsay, Lizzie Grubman? But also, Lizzie had some show. And she was in the Hamptons. And then it showed her PR firm. I forget the name of the show. Something like that would be super cool. Agreed. I agree. The summer house thing is stale. There, you can't mm-hmm. have married couple couples enough already. I know. I've been banging this no more couple house drum for a while now. <laughs> so you know, yep. I agree. But speaking of Austin, we got an email this week that sounds like it could be him. <laughs> Do you want to beer read and cheer? Yeah. What a title. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Guys, because I know you loved this. The beer mogul is seeing a gorgeous Denver Broncos cheerleader. When I tell you the comments lit up, beer mogul, question mark, question mark, question mark. (laughs) I mean, so a bunch of people told me he was seeing this girl. She is gorgeous. She looks like a young Giselle Bundchen. When I posted the email, she started following me. So... Hmm. Um, it seems true. I hear she wants fame. I mean, don't maybe, all these people? Maybe she sent the email in. Oh, possibly. Olivia still seeing that hot baseball player, by the way. She was posting him. I need to, like, look into who he is. I'm pretty sure it's a minor league guy. He's super cute. And, like, you know what? Good for them. Yeah. They obviously were in a match. I always felt like it just didn't vibe. How great was it, by the way... You and I have not talked about this, but I think you posted about it, that Olivia just totally owned up this week to her, like, plastic surgery and, like, some of her fillers. I thought that was... Love it. Super cool. So somebody, like, posted a comment and said, wow, you look super different here. And she screenshotted it, shared it to her stories, and tagged her plastic surgeon. She's like, yep, no job by so-and-so and and filler by so-and-so. And And I'm like, you know what? Good for you. Yeah. And she looks great. She's always looked great, to be clear. She's yeah. a beautiful girl. I mean, why the hell not? I am pro doing whatever makes you, as long as it's legal and you're a consenting adult, if you want to change your face, that's your absolute business. And in her case, looks great. Yeah. Agreed. And, you know. Oh, and I didn't post this yet, but I'm hearing that they're looking at the Winter House cast, like who they're going to have on it. Also, there was this whole rumor circulating around about some of like they were trying to make it like some like scandalous thing that people weren't showing up to the winter house reunion and it was made clear to me by a source that it seemed like the source was a producer but i don't really know for sure but what i heard was it was kind of last minute they said hey we're gonna do a watch what happens live winter house reunion and three of the people who they didn't even tell me which three it was but people are like blaming craig or blaming page three of the people and remember like Paige is touring with Hannah soon. Yeah. So whatever it is, three of the people, and I don't know know if that's why, but three of the people were like, we can't, we have stuff booked. Like, you know, we're booked and busy. So right. it was not this sinister, like, 
they were signed up to go to a reunion and they refused to come because, guys, they would have a contract if that were the case. Obviously, a reunion wasn't part of the contract. Yeah. They tried to throw something together and three of the people couldn't do it. So you're going to do it without three. I guess you could. But yeah. they're not. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of a lot of nothing. Yes. Which a big also, nothing burger. Speaking of, we got an email this week about Catherine from Southern Charm that she is facing eviction. So we looked into it and we actually had a cocktailer share some paperwork and there was some stuff we found. So it looks like what I thought was really interesting, like some very like landlord centric laws in South Carolina where you can be evicted if you are five days late on rent, which to me insane. feels insane, right? Like you're like, oops, God, I'm, I'm back from I Europe. I could totally and... see myself forgetting. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Or like, like you're on vacation, right? Right, And yeah. you're totally, yeah, yeah, ridiculous. But from the stuff that we saw, plus another email that we got, it looks like it was actually an issue on the buildings side because i guess like everything just automatically goes on the record if they're past mm. the five days it sounds like she is not in danger of being evicted that's very good news you know it's kind of like the opposite of new york where oh my god like landlords cannot get people out yeah it's really bad and then in covid they passed something that like you couldn't evict remember we saw Joe yeah. Gorda that was a national out? law i think where you couldn't oh, evict it? people. Yeah, there were like, it was like a, I think so. But yeah, I know I've heard, I do remember that video of Joe Gorga freaking out on that guy, which I can't. Which that I see like both sides awful. of it. It would be awful I see both be sides of it. Yeah. But, but, oh, I can't. But listen, they make a lot of money. Yeah. But especially in New York City. But the thing about it is I see both sides of it. However, I know that in New York and probably nationally, sure, Okay, the people don't have to pay rent. However, the landlord's still on the hook for the taxes and everything. So it's kind of like, you know, a building in Manhattan or a building wherever in New York, the taxes could be like $100,000 a year. So like the property taxes. So, okay, it's great that people don't have to pay their rent because I understand people were unemployed. It was a pandemic. But how is the landlord supposed to pay the tax bill? So, like, you got to kind of give them a break, too, in that right. case. And they didn't. So that – I know that that was a lot of, like, the disgruntlement of the East Coast people because yeah. I do know people that, you know, own properties and stuff like that. But, yeah, so Catherine is not being evicted. Much ado about nothing. Yep, exactly. Well, I'm happy to clear that one up because we, we always root for Catherine to succeed. She's a mom. She's a young mom. She's a young single mom. Yeah. Her ex is a nightmare, by the way. You saw that email that he's banned from everywhere and everyone <laughs> messages me. They're like, B, this is old news. This is why he moved to wherever he lives. Like, everyone hates him. <laughs> well, I think we know why he's banned out of a lot of places. All you have to do is go back a few weeks, maybe month and a half or two. Oh, God. And there was a blind. Don't say it. But there was a blind about a person who, yeah, we won't we won't go any whipped further. His, whipped his whipped taco his taco out in a Mexico <laughs> Mexican restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Oh so I can imagine that'll, that'll get you banned pretty quick. So, okay. Speaking of things we've been talking about for a long time, I feel like we're on week 100 of trying to nail down the ultimate girls trip for cast. We're still hearing. What a pain from... in the ass. My sources Seriously, keep like guys. reneging on me and I'm so sick of putting out fake casts that I just stopped until someone gives me something firm. Yeah. So this here's the latest email that we got. The network is not done with these sister-in-laws. Well, here we are talking about it again, but whatever. It's still fun to talk about. Well, this actually isn't an email. This is from a source. Oh, okay. Sorry. So this this is it's here's the it's post. not my A1 source, but it's a good source. Okay. The network is not done with these sister-in-laws. The one who has hinted at returning in the future will be appearing on the next season of the spin-off. The other one will be back eventually in some capacity. Oh, and the other sister and sister-in-law who once made a comeback to the show, she's been approached as well, but declined. So, guys, I'm hearing that Caroline will, in fact, be on the next girl's trip. Jacqueline apparently was approached for the ex-wives one at Dorinda's, I think, but it didn't work out. She's definitely on the list, though. Like, we can expect to see her at some point. 
And Dina was approached in a surprise to no one. She turned it down. <laughs> and so then the next question becomes, do we see like Caroline and Caroline and Jacqueline making a return to Jersey? Well, Jacqueline lives in Vegas, right? So no. And Caroline does not speak to her brother, Chris. They had a big falling out. She does keep in touch with Ashley because Ashley's still in Jersey. And she does occasionally talk to Jacqueline from what I hear. Could Ca- could Caroline come back? I mean, I, never say never. I mean, First of all, I could totally see her meshing with Margaret. Yes. Agreed. She's friends with Dolores. God knows Melissa needs an ally right about now. Yeah. I mean, these Jersey ex-wives are uh, honestly some of my all-time favorite housewives. I mean, I, and... Even if we just get to see him on a trip, like Caroline, for the tough voice of reason, the no bullshit kind of voice of reason, Dina, if she would ever do it for the like calm but quiet shade, and then Jacqueline for the fun. And I think her heart, like she's just got a like big heart. So I don't know. I think. I think the only thing I would wonder is how it would all pan out because they've been off screen, like off camera for so long and like how that would work from a cabinetry standpoint with the other wives. But I don't know. I like it. So we did get another little bit of Jersey tea that if you want to share that. So some the, the same person said that the person that they were speaking with said the production loves Teresa. When I posted that, a lot of people were like, what do you mean? She was rude to them last year about the Louis thing. But they said that overall, over all these years, she's extremely easy to work with. She's very accommodating. She doesn't say like, oh no, I can't. I have this. I have that. She, I guess she, she gives them full access. You can come to my girl's soccer, my dance, my whatever. She cooks for them. Like she's just, she's very easy to work with and they really like her. And you know, to, to Teresa's credit, she's had the same makeup, the same hair, I think that she is a really nice person. I I always have thought that she's a nice person. I think that her public persona and if someone comes for her and even even a little bit, you know, I mean, she's on TV. She's got to give us a show. But yeah, they like her. And also another thing is this same person said that Dolores and Margaret production loves to like offer them gigs, which makes sense. We often see them like at openings and shows and this and that. So I think it's because they're easy. I know Margaret is very friendly and outgoing and Dolores is too, and also very easy to work with. So on the topic of Teresa, I was watching watch what happens live. I can't remember which show it was after it might've been like Tuesday nights. I can't remember when, I don't know, but she was on with Andy and I'm going to, I'm hoping I'm saying her name right. Ego Noyam, who's Mm -hmm. on Saturday night live. And anyway, they're talking about to Teresa. I guess Teresa's going to be in a TV movie. And she's <laughs> saying that she's going to be acting. And oh, Andy God. was like kind of shadily kind of like poking at that. And she's like, well, didn't you see my ad? She's like, that was like kind of acting. It was it was a little bit funny. I don't know. She is never going to be my favorite. But I have heard that. Like the the behind the scenes folks really like working with her and that she is has is very gracious, gives them all the access, you know, when she's cooking, cooks more so that she can give it for them. And I can see like you're and in she's also, people's houses day in after day out. Like and the people who do small kindnesses like that would that goes a long way. She also doesn't filter herself because she I don't even think she knows how to. She doesn't have the capacity. So that's also you're getting good bites. It's somebody like Margaret as an example. She's going to craft what she says. She's going to think about it. Jackie, Melissa, they're going to like get an angle. They're Melissa's, I mean, Teresa's just like, this is what it is. This is (laughs) like, it's just what you see is what you get. There's not, there's not a ton of wood burning up there. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Like it's there. It's just boom, boom. I kind of get, I think that Danielle is that way. I think Jen is that way. The new Danielle, I mean, because if you ever watch her Insta stories, it's just, you know, and listen, those people are fun to watch. Say what we will, they're fun to watch, whether yeah. we personally love them or not. It's good TV. It is. It is. And then... I, okay. Oh, also about Caroline coming back. Oh, yeah. I mean, Lauren has a kid now. And, you know, so there's there's a lot they can do with her. If she 
if they paid her, I think it would work great. I I mean, I would love to see it. I think most fans absolutely would. And I do kind of feel like that would shake things up in a good way on that cast, right? We And we obviously haven't seen the new season, so totally. we don't know how the new Housewives are. But, like, to have somebody like Caroline kind of come in and, again, be that kind of no BS. And, like, I think everyone's, like, a little bit scared of her kind of situation it would be i think very entertaining entertaining i think it would be interesting to see if her and marge hit it off or if they clashed because they have similar alpha dog personalities and that yeah. can go either way i feel and like I they would get along. that would be interesting i think i, I think, think, think they would get along too i think, I think marge, marge is smart would... enough to befriend her exactly that's exactly what i was just gonna say like i think she would be like we we would be better off as friends and yeah so okay yeah. so speaking of good tv the Potomac, you know, I love a mid-season trailer. So Potomac mid-season trailer is up. What do you think? I mean, you and I have been talking about this and wondering when someone, anyone, would finally talk about all of the Juan rumors. I mean, guys, this was all over the internet during filming. Yeah. Amanda and I and you guys that listen every week have heard us week after week be like, what's the story? Is production protecting her? Like, why are we not hearing this? Well... We're going to hear it, all right. Karen comes out. She says she knows Juan's other girlfriend. She's blonde. She, Karen goes, she looks like me. And I don't know who she was telling, but the person was like, she looks like you. She's like, yeah, she's blonde. <laughs> that made me laugh. Only because, I mean, I love I love a woman with confidence. But the odds of Juan dating somebody older than him are slim. So when she yeah. says looks like her, it's a little, you know, it's a little funny to me. Yeah. Okay, so... Then, so she calls it out at a dinner. We see her be like, oh, this whole thing with marriage is freaking fake. You guys aren't even really together. So then you see Charisse turn around and it seems like she's saying Karen is, Karen is cheating. Then you hear Juan on the phone screaming and yelling. I'm just like, what? Like, is Robin just trying to cover this up? Does she know he did something? Does she not want to talk about it on television? Understanding her kids are you know, school-aged, older, yeah. they know what's going on. Is the relationship fake? Does she know about this? Are they not really together? What is going on? I need the truth, people. I want the freaking truth. I, I, It's not all adding up for me because Robin has been so open. I mean, talked about her mess up with taxes, talked about how they lost all their money, how, talked about how, you know, the reason that she and Juan broke up the first time Right. You know, I just uh, it it's confusing to me as well just because she has been so open in the past. So and I just I have to say like I just And hope... maybe they have an open relationship and they don't yeah. want to say that. Yeah, that could be. I don't know. You're very interested in those boys on the beach in Miami. Yeah, she was. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I would have been too, but not not oh that God. out. Like, I would have been looking. I would have been looking. I couldn't. I wouldn't. Or chatting. I don't think. I don't touch. I don't touch. <laughs> but I would have been definitely been looking as well. You can chat. You can look. You could chat, but you shouldn't touch. God no. You don't want to meet too a twenty year old. It's, it's inappropriate. It, it is inappropriate. It works both ways, right? <laughs> so I don't know, but like, I just hope for her that there is something more going on. And that we just don't know. Because I just hope she's not getting heartbroken for the second time. Because I right. only imagine it's got to hurt more the second time. Because then with the second time, she's got to then be questioning her own judgment and lamenting the right. time loss, investing in this, you know, somebody who won't stop cheating on her. So And then it's really over. Like, yeah. you can't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then it's either you accept the relationship for what it is. Right. And you stay there, which maybe she's done. We don't know. We want to know, though. You owe it to us. Yes, you do, Robin. <laughs> Come on, we've, we're invested in this. Well, and then you like, gave us this engagement. Yeah, that's true. I mean, th she's given us everything. That's what's not adding up. Allegedly, she's, yeah. I think I she's given us not everything. Well, she got to give us. Look like she it. Really, got to give us the whole scoop here. Well, and then Charisse, we know she's been beating the drum of Karen having a boyfriend for quite a long time. So, and I think that's been why Karen has been uncomfortable with her this season, especially, and the, the last season when she kind of popped up too. And so, you know, it seems to me like, you know, the I did watch the first season of Potomac and it did seem like they had some of the same original circle of friends. So it, 
it's not out of the realm of possibility for me that that could be true. So, I don't know. I mean, this has been speculated in the past. I don't even think this is a current thing. But I felt so bad when Karen got so upset when she heard that Candace had said that she was running around. Like, she started, like, crying kind of at the table. And she seemed genuinely hurt about that. So. Yeah. But, you know, listen. And the thing about it is you can like a person. You can like a couple. But if you've done it. It's going to come out. I mean, uh, when are people going to learn that they can't hide their lives if they're on television? You know, and Potomac for me is an interesting one because I generally, I am on a specific, I mean, I always pick sides with Housewives, right? Like with all of the, all of the drama, but with Potomac especially, like I, I, I really like Karen, but I also really like kind of like she has some you know inadvertently but still funny moments Mm. i like robin i like giselle i like ashley you know and like all of them kind of do stuff but i i kind of i just i really like them all just as housewives and people and somebody that i like to watch i'm not as crazy about wendy i don't care for candace although candace has been i like her this season and I yes. really, I really disliked her. Yes. But you know what's and, and interesting there's... about what you're saying? I feel like I'm the same way, but I feel like the Potomac housewives are b- like that with each other. Like, yeah. there's an undertone of friendship amongst, with the exception of Mia and Wendy, the rest of the women, even when, like, even you see Ashley and Candace, even though they've, they're at odds a lot of times, there are there is a friendship there in a weird yeah. way. There's a sisterhood yeah. amongst those women, with the exception of Mia and Wendy. You're the right. The only it's one not a clear that I don't alliance. like is Mia. I really don't like her. I yeah, think she's I really annoying. But do I want her off the show? I don't know. It's it's the only one that's got to go for me is Sharice. The rest, I feel like it's a really good combo. Yeah, Mia has been. Like it's Ugh. just been, and then I'm looking, and again, she's just a phony man. None of yeah. it, none of it's legit. The whole thing with her is weird, and I'm gonna have to dig up what's going on with her business. I'm gonna make myself a little note oh, to do that yes, let's because die. we talked about that a while ago, and we need to follow back up for for everybody. She does this. She's outrageous on social media, and then she just doesn't mention it again. It's so annoying. Yeah, agreed. We need to know how the story ends. Always. Yes. So okay, so Netflix reality shows i know a lot of cocktailers watch my unorthodox life there's been a couple of little things coming up you know last year we posted that botcheva was getting divorced that was one of our first like big stories because that's when we first started the website yes yeah and then, and then like then... a couple days later we found out julie was divorcing and i remember calling you like oh my god imagine this stuff is true and it was and yes <laughs> well and like i mean talk about soap opera life my goodness like People are shocked by one thing, and it's like, and by the way, two of us are getting divorced. But, you know, we knew we had a good source on that one. And now there's been some more intel kind of trickling in about that whole situation. And if you guys have been visiting the site, you've been reading it. I binged it. I mean, she is addicting to watch. You can see how she, like, swindles people. But does anyone actually believe her? I mean, I've had many sources tell me that she greatly exaggerated her escape from Muncie. They claim that it was not as she describes. One thing that's very telling to me is on the one hand, she paints her ex-husband as in a very negative light. But unless he's evolved in the way that she has, they have a very nice relationship. He's very supportive of her. We even see with the youngest son. You know what I'm saying? So are we expected to believe that this man who was so rigid all of a sudden is so accepting? I, 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 you know, modern Orthodox is not radical or fundamentalist. And what the, what the sources, and when I say sources, it's people from the community have messaged me yeah. and said that they were modern Orthodox, which is again, not radical. Beyond that, I do find it interesting. I enjoy, I know you do learning about the culture and the religion. Whether she's authentic or not, we're, you know, we're learning a lot. I myself am not Jewish, so I'm learning a lot. But the thing about it that's bananas is that a billionaire married her, took her fake last name, 
and gave her a CEO position. I mean, these are all things that happened. I mean, she convinced this man to do this. For me, that was the biggest thing. Because I'm like, hold on a second. I actually went before, like, I started doing deep dives on stuff for Bravo and cocktails. Like, I did my own little deep dive. I was like, this does not add up. I'm sorry. Having had a career, like, you have had a career. I've had a career. It does not make sense to me that you don't get to go to college that because of, you know, your religion, which is what she said, right? That you bust out of it and then you start a shoe company and two years later are or however many, three or five, three years later after you've busted out of this religion that you're now the CEO of a company, like it doesn't, it just doesn't add up. So I'm like, right. something happened. Somebody gave her this position. Some money came somewhere to even start this shoe company. Like, I could not agree with you, Mark. That to me was the craziest piece of it. Yeah, Silvio came. The fact, though, that she convinced this billionaire to marry her is incredible in and of itself. Yeah. Currently, we know she's losing every lawsuit. The judge did grant her that she is allowed to stay in the penthouse, which she rents out, I heard, for get what it was like $125,000 a month. I'm going to assume, you know, she needs that income. That's why she does it. I don't know where she's living. I guess she downsized to a regular apartment. The thing is she's, oh, by the way, he's already remarried and he married somebody with younger children than hers. Also the other like grifter, when she's nervous about them coming to the apartment, she keeps saying there's children here. Her children that are there are all in their twenties. Aaron does not live with her. And he's not there when she's saying this. So what children? I mean, Miriam is 23 years old. That's not a child. It's your child, but it's not a child. So that to me, that's like, it shows how she can just roll things off her tongue, right? Like, yeah. But I mean, she turns around and says that he was mean and he didn't include her children. We saw none of that last season. Could they have hid it from us? Sure. But then why did he marry a woman with two school-aged children? Just now, like you just remarried. And the kicker is the woman has like a huge diamond and it's in the shape of a heart. Coincidence? I think not. The new woman, <laughs> I didn't the know new that. Wife. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Symbolism. Yeah, I have not, I have not watched this season yet. So I'm definitely going to add it to my binge list for all the shows that I'm going to watch kind of after Christmas. I definitely d- did enjoy watching the first season. That's kind of when I went into that little investigative mode I just you know hearing about this right and when all this started to go down it just it made me want to like are we just seeing is this a pattern like is this our our producers just looking for somebody who's living above their means you know like or people living above their is it a chicken and egg thing right are people just living way above their means so that they can get on to reality tv because I mean we've seen it with Teresa seen it with the Chrisleys. We've seen it with Jen Shaw. We've seen it with Julia Hart. I'm sure there's some other people that I'm not even thinking of. I don't well, know. with the exception of Beverly Hills, ensemble casts in general don't really have wealthy people. And what we've learned is the people who seem wealthy actually are swindling the government. Yeah. So, yeah. and again, with the exception of Beverly Hills, because we know that Kyle's really wealthy. We know that Kathy's really wealthy. Yeah. And on and on. There's plenty of them that have, you know, before the old seasons, they are real wealth. But then again, that's set in Hollywood and that's the whole thing. But the rest, I mean, it, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's interesting. And speaking of, of wealth coming and going, the restraining order that Lenny's mistress attempted to get against Lisa, the judge threw it out. He said there were no indication that Lisa was stalking or harassing the mistress. Shocker. And then I'll watch what happens live. Did you see Lenny's hot oh, mic moment? My God. If you guys haven't seen it, go and Google it and like look it up and watch it because it is. My heart dropped. So apparently he says that he he like is saying to a guy he's in the kitchen and he's mic'd and he's like, Oh, I'm going to be single soon. And the guy's like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, you know, I've always done whatever I want. I've always done my own thing. But like, it's time for me to just be fully single. And the guy, whoever the guy is, is like, wait, does Lisa know this? He's like, yeah, we've been talking about it forever. We talk about it every day. Like, I'm done. I want out. And 
Like, what? You have two children. Like, they're going to see this one day. Trash, trash, trash. Let's just, let's just, I think something we can all agree on. I don't think anybody is thinking Lenny's going to come out of this season with anybody liking him. (laughs) It's pretty clear he is being a piece of shit. And, you know, just not, again, you got to think about your legacy, Lenny. And here I am, I'm talking to you again, but you got to think about your legacy. You got to think about how things are going to be five, six, seven years down the road when your kids are out of this like little kid age and are like become really people with phones and who can Google stuff like God, like, I don't know. It's just, it's insane to me. And then, you know, there's, I guess it's just, it's one of those weeks where just affairs come out. Cause then there's the whole TJ Holmes and Amy Robach the two are they both anchors on GMA? They are, right? Full disclosure. Amy, Amy I don't watch I don't watch this stuff. I mean, I, I'm I am not available in the morning. <laughs> yeah. And if I was, I'd be watching like reruns of Housewives. I'm not into I'm not into news. I, I especially morning news. I find it irritating and like fake and the only one I do like the Kelly and Ryan show. Like I like them, yeah. but outside I don't watch like morning news. I mean, every once in a while, because I'm I work too, so right, like it's just there's it, I don't see it very often. But yes, I don't watch GMA. I just didn't. I don't. I don't watch it very frequently to know kind of generally who everybody is. And I will turn on the news here and there, but again with you know work and kids and whatever, there's just not a lot of time. Especially and again, this is times. something that we had had emails on that I didn't even know who it was. And I, sometimes we don't post stuff because we get, I mean, we get like stuff about like real random stuff. Like forget about golf tea. And I'm like, I don't think anyone's even interested in this, but when this kind of came out, you know, I dug through and we got some more stuff, but so on the surface, you have two consensual adults having an affair, right? It's not so groundbreaking. However, what we're learning as time goes is TJ seems to have a pattern of this because it came out that he was also having an affair with a married producer at the same time, right? So he was cheating on his triple wife. Triple timing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, triple timing. I think it was an effort to avoid a Matt Lauer situation. They took them off the air because they were being cautious. Our followers, by the way, love the email that we got that said the grandmas in the Bible Belt were unhappy with the affair. <laughs> Listen, not my <laughs> words, but it was funny. That's now, funny. this is what I was reading today. Uh, someone sent me. The real juicy thing is apparently... Amy Robach, right? That's her name, is blaming Lara Spencer for her removal. And again, guys, this is from Cocktailers because I don't I don't watch these shows. But Amy and Lara have had tension since Robin Roberts took a break from GMA to recover from her bone marrow transplant in 2012. Lara was livid that Amy was seen by the bosses as, you know, the next in line. It was clear that Amy would be the one to step in. Lara wanted the gig. She's never forgotten it. I'm sorry. Hold on one sec. I got to take a sip of seltzer. Regular seltzer. (laughs) (laughs) However, somebody else claims that that's not true. She's always been supportive of Amy and TJ. That's someone else is probably Lara's rep. So, you know, they took them off the air. Yeah. I mean, they took them off the air. What I'm hearing is that people are thinking that they're going to let Amy come back and he's going to not come back because there's more to it with him. Do you watch Morning Show on Apple TV? I don't even have Apple TV. Okay. That is such a good show. So It's like a sitcom, worth... you mean? No, it's it's a drama. It's Reese Witherspoon and Jennifer Aniston and God, the loose how do I not premise know about of this? it. Yeah, it's so good. There's two seasons or three seasons. The loose premise is it's kind of loosely based on the aftermath of what happened at the Today Show. Like, it's like an alternative universe, right? And like, so that Steve Carell is in it and Steve Carell was like the Matt Lauer cat character. Um, it's just, it's interesting watching it because it makes it clear just how cutthroat and how just insane the morning TV show business is. The whole world Highly, is, Yeah, even just yeah. get Apple TV for like a month just to watch. It's that good, I promise. I want to get it. I'm it's going to. so like good. In- in the deep winter when I'm right. not leaving my house. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's my, I have a, this whole big list. So I don't know. I, I, you know, it, it's pretty clear 
that there's all kinds of stuff going on. I can't imagine Amy and Lara being like, you know, besties for the resties when there's one spot and they're both competing for it. But right. who knows? I just, just, just now my top source sent me because people are, people are saying that Erica and I didn't even see it, but people are telling me Erica posted that her and Rena were both ass back. My source says, guys, this is as of December 8th. No one has signed yet. Filming slated to start at the end of January though. Contracts in holding pattern. Discussions ongoing. Nothing finalized. So he's made that very clear. That doesn't surprise me. (laughs) I highly doubt Rena's not coming back. I think I I don't see them. First of all, we just saw them at the People's Choice Awards. They were all sitting together. You know, you kind of wonder how much of this is all bullshit and it's just for TV. Did you see Kyle's post though? Where she's like doing the video and she's like, awkward. (laughs) (laughs) Like pans around to all of them sitting together. And then Rena did a post and she was like, not awkward and was like smiling, but Kathy like wasn't looking at her. And Kathy's legs were also like, she was seated awkwardly. And I was like, this is is not a flattering pose. Yeah. Okay. So another thing that has been like quietly blowing up for a while, but then especially this week is the story about Arielle Charnas of something Navy and her husband, Brandon. Um, Full disclosure, Amanda and I are not really people who follow influencers. I have a couple that I do follow, but in other words, I'm not like, I don't know their life stories. I, the whole influencer world to me is, it's mystical. I I don't know how these people do it. I think it's great. I want to be one. (laughs) I want to like, I want that to be my job. Like I want to put on a sweater and make like a million dollars a year. So good for them, but I don't really get it. And I don't follow like the politics of it yeah i don't know but apparently there are a lot of that going on and amanda's dove in yeah well and also apparently if you're an influencer like the camera eats first when you go out to eat and i'm like i'm not having any of that (laughs) what do you what do you mean oh you have to get the picture you mean they say yeah you have to take pictures before like of of the food once it arrives and whatever before you can eat and i'm like screw that So there's the first reason we're not going to become influencers. There you go. That's like the main reason. I mean, for a million dollars a year, Amanda, we could... I don't think so. Perhaps? No. I like like my food hot. So anyway, as soon as all this started to happen, I was like, okay, I think we got to do a deep dive. So I want to start out just by like explaining because I don't think everybody like, you know, quite follows her, but I knew who she was. I had seen her stuff. She created this brand as a blog. So she created something maybe as a kind of fashion blog she also has a very big instagram following she's at like 1.3 million followers she posts her outfits like she was very big on like street style you know posts her outfits almost daily shows a lot a lot of her personal life her kids her husband all of that so she turned it into a brand by doing a limited edition clothing line with Nordstrom, I want to say. In and this is how I know her. I remember when she got flack during COVID. That was yes. all over. Yeah, exactly. That's how I know her name. I did not know who she was before that. Exactly. And that's that's the other, like, one other big reason is because she got a ton of bad press in 2020 because of some of her behavior. You know, she lives in New York City. She flaunted that, like, like right after she said that she had COVID, then she flaunted that they went to the Hamptons, which was obviously a huge no-no because I think we were supposed to quarantine for like three weeks back then. She went to Miami when everybody was supposed to still be staying at home. So, And I just want to take this time to interject and say she experienced this bad press, which got her a lot more followers because again, not that I even follow her, but I didn't know who she was. And then after that, I looked at her page. So now I do. So we say all that to say, this could all be bullshit. And she could be putting this out because listen, the girl knows what she's doing. She's got 1.3 million followers out of nowhere. She's never been on a show or anything. So yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. And like this guys, all the stuff that I'm sharing, by the way, is all stuff that we don't have any specific sources. This is all just stuff that we are kind of pulling together around. from multiple places. Yeah. Yes. You can look on TikTok. And, and also yeah. people are very jealous, like me. Um. <laughs> She's very thin. She's very thin. Well, no, thin. but people, I mean, I don't 
I don't care about that. That's been established. I don't care about, but I, I would care about like I'm reading that you have written that her brand is valued at forty five million dollars. <laughs> Shit, I I could do some streetwear for forty five million dollars. Yeah, I know. I just was laughing at myself because I was like, I know why she's so thin because the camera eats first. Mm. <laughs> Maybe it should be an influencer. That's my okay. New I'm diet. just kidding, but no, she's she, she has a great style, like great taste. Like she's got a like fun personality. Like she she plays the Instagram game very well. So she and her husband, after doing the Nordstrom thing, they took the brand to a new level by creating like a full on fashion brand that has an e commerce store and flagship store on Bleecker Street, New York, some other stores in other locations in South Southern California. So And the name is something navy. Something navy. It's what also is, a catchy just, name. I like it. I don't know. I kinda like it. One like, of her kids is named Navy too. She, her youngest, yes. I trust me. I I did a deep dive. I went in and was looking <laughs> at all of her stuff. Because I had seen her stuff before and would look, you know, I don't know, just wasn't super into it. But she, so the brand, so they got a big investment of $10 million in 2019, which then valued the brand at $45 million. So big, right? Wow. Some of those investors were Tommy Hilfiger, Michael Kors, and this company called, a venture fund called M3 Ventures that specializes in working and investing in fashion and lifestyle brands. So here's where things started to get interesting. This This week, or I think it was maybe a little bit before, Arielle turned off her comments on her Instagram, which if you're playing the Instagram game, you're always looking for more followers. That's a huge no-no because you're, you know, if you're an influencer looking to grow, you're cutting all your engagement off, which means Mm -hmm. your stuff isn't going to get shown as much. And she had a weekly podcast that she just suddenly stopped on November 8th. Mm. On November 30th, she put out a bonus episode saying she's taking a little break, but doesn't say when she'll be back, which again, like if you've got a podcast, like, and you're not, if you're not going to post on your normal schedule, it's very, very unusual to just be like, well, yeah, I'm sure she has tons of advertisers and she's giving up a lot of revenue. She's yeah. Because I mean, just for behind the scenes kind of thing, like revenue or advertisers buy rep, like buy ads up to a year in advance. So yeah, I would definitely say she's something is up. So, you know, I would Which think, could be anything, right? We, God forbid, we don't, you know, you don't know, but I, right. I think, I guess I'm making a guess here that that's a lot to kind of walk away from unless there's something going on, especially when something you're turning off brewing. your Instagram account, right? Comments, because why would you turn off your comments unless you know something is kind of coming and you kind of just don't want to hear what people have to say? And interestingly enough, Brandon has been in Miami the last week or two while all this is kind of going on. It looks like he's back because she posted a picture of the two of them together, but you don't know for sure that. That's from today. I don't know. Right. Um, So then since October, there has been this rumor going around on Reddit saying that Brandon is being investigated for fraud and embezzlement for stealing from the company. There has been nothing put out there to prove that this is true. So I just want to say this again, guys, like this is just a rumor and it's Reddit. So, you know, we can really take that. Yeah, it is. (laughs) But... Also, according to Reddit, investors did not receive their Q3 reports from the company that they had been notified that the company is going bankrupt and apparently employee paychecks bounced last week. Again, we don't confirm any of this stuff. This is what this is some of the stuff that we've been pulling together. So there's been talk about this big article coming out from Business Insider that is going to expose the whole situation. So it was supposed to come out earlier this week. As of today, the the 8th of December, it still had not come out last time I checked, which was a few hours ago. Arielle has not been wearing her wedding rings in pictures, which is a departure because she used to before. There have been some rumors run, running around about Brendan. You guys are welcome to Google all of that. But a lot of people are speculating that they're getting divorced. So what I think is interesting is like, this could be about a business thing. This could be about their relationship thing. Cause with Arielle, the whole family is her brand, right? And like her husband right. being part of it. 
So, you know, there's definitely something up. But yesterday, a representative for Ariel came out and denied the divorce, said they're still in love, everything's fine. And the Something Navy CEO came out and said, there's nothing true about the rumors about Brandon being investigated. So I don't know, like there's an interesting voice recording going around TikTok, just Google it, not going to bring up what that's about. I also just wanted to share too, guys, that like, whenever we do get some of the stuff, I do want to like, look and see if there's anything I can find and get my own eyes on. And so I have now because of my side hustle as a private investigator, (laughs) I have gotten access to this government database that just takes a couple steps to do it. So it's not like anybody can just go on it. You have to sign up and you have to get mail and then you have to sign back up. You have to give a credit card because you don't have to pay a certain amount of money. It's, it's nominal, but you have to. I look, there is nothing current as far as any kind of court cases involving him. Nothing has been filed, nothing like that so far. So nothing official, at least from a court case standpoint has been filed against him. So again, I think this is just a wait and see, and we're definitely going to keep you guys posted as soon as stuff is happening. But like, like I said, I think it could be about the company. It could be about the marriage or both. It's hard to say. So what do you think? I I think that I hope it's not true because it sounds awful. (laughs) I mean, there's also rumors about like the husband and what he was doing down in Miami at Art Basel. Again, yeah. Google it. I wonder, is it possible that this is all nothing? The reason that I, that gives me pause, I think something is happening, is because, to your point, taking your podcast off when you're at that level and you have advertisements and you're breaking a lot of contracts and you're giving up, you're leaving money on the table. Same with your Instagram account. Something's happening. Yeah. But is it? Everything that is being speculated, probably not, but something something's going to come out. So yeah. this time next week, we may have more to that. But I think that she's given clear indicators that something's going on. Now, could it be a family situation? God forbid something's going on in their you know health or something like that. Of course it could be. But it just seems odd that there's all this speculation and that he wasn't around and he was in Miami like... Even if it's all rumors, let's say this is all a rumor, like, you know, you would support your spouse through it because in the public, that would be very hard to deal with. So why aren't you with your spouse? Right. Yeah. You get your ass out of Miami and you go to New York and you're seen publicly. And yeah, because that's what matters the most. If things are fine and at least for a little bit, he did not do that. He did. Maybe he did as of this morning, but Again, yeah, I think there's a lot of smoke around this one. So I think that we'll be definitely talking about more. And there's a bunch of emails on the site that I've got received that are hinting at things. Again, they're emails. I have nothing from a source, you know, so it could be someone reading Reddit and sending it to me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not vouching for any of that stuff. I'm just sharing it because the people want to know. I mean, as I say, I don't really follow the politics, but a lot lot of cocktailers are into this influencer world. So. Based on my Reddit snooping, I mean, people are going on, there's this one um, specific subreddit that people keep going on over and over again and saying, has the article come out? Has the article come out? And then there's been like screenshots of, you know, confirming that Business Insider says, yes, there's going to be an article. But again, you can't trust that that's true. You know, it could be something doctored. It's You never know. But people, I mean, just the amount of people just saying, has there been anything posted? Like it is, people are very invested in this story. So we will see something, something is. Listen, the divorce they can control. They can choose not to announce that, announce it later, not divorce. That's in their control. Yeah. Embezzlement, not so much. So if that's going to drop, there's nothing they could do. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll, well find interesting. out. Well, we'll keep you guys posted. The Jen Shah of it all. I know. Once again, <laughs> all these people. Maybe. All right, guys. Well, well, we don't know. But you guys, thank you so much. I just wanted to wrap just by saying that actually, as of tonight, because this will come out next Wednesday, we are going to be doing our first monthly Zoom with the Cocktail Party crew at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. What is that? The 13th? 
or the 14th. 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 I will say, I think that that is, yes, it's the 14th. I think a follower messaged me and they're like, B, that's when Salt Lake City is on. Eight o'clock is a good time. It's not too late. Well, it's eight o'clock New York time. It's not too late. It's not too early for people who, you know, are on the West Coast. And again, you know, Amanda and I, we listen to your feedback. If we decide that that's not a good time, it's a work in progress, but we want to get it in and we want to do it before the holidays because first of all, we're all freaking stressed. Are you guys freaking stressed? I am stressed, man. (laughs) It's a lot. Busy. I I, I had having nothing to do with this. I just mean like the gifts and the this and the that. Yeah. And who do you got to get for and... What does Aunt Susie need? And do you even got to get well, Aunt Susie gifts like that because you're grown ass gets, people? Yeah. And then the random person gives you like, wine. oh, here, I got you something. You're like, right. oh, shit. Now I have to go get that person something. That you're is like, such oh. a huge stress, though, Amanda. Is it not? Like, okay, do you know what I do? And I want to know what you do. I go to Yankee Candle. I go to Bed Bath & Beyond. Or when I say I go, I mean I order online. And <laughs> I buy like 10 candles and like... A few sets so that if I'm handed a gift by somebody that I'm not expecting, I have something to give them. Also, I always have a case of good wine on hand, but not everybody drinks, right? So you can't. So, so those are, those are what I do. I always have candles and then I have that and then I have some sort of booze so that when someone shows up or rings the bell and hands me something, I have something to give. What do you do? I do something similar. So I, I do tend to buy up on. I buy up on nice bottles of wine and champagne and just have little like bags and bows and everything kind of ready for that. And then I just plan a little time in, you know, the 22nd or so right around then to have like a last minute just run to go grab stuff if needed for that because usually by the time we get to 23rd 24th it's just family stuff so there's no more surprise gift giving (laughs) so that you know and then I I handle stuff you know for like work gifting and stuff I handle all that ahead of time as well and just have like I said extra bottles of wine and, and that kind of stuff ready to go so yeah it's a lot but and that's definitely something guys like with us trying to do a zoom time like there's never going to be a great time for everybody so maybe we'll try it one way one month and we'll try it another time another month and just see what we've had the best kind of turnout but the worst thing for us to do would to be not do it at all because nobody can agree on what the best time is so anyway if and you have here's my question yet, are we going to record it and like no right it's like live be there be square <laughs> If we I don't know do how I feel about it, recording it because I kind of plan on going off the cuff. I know. I was going to say, if we do record it, it would obviously only be cocktail party only. I don't know. Right. We got to let's maybe see what we say and then see if we release a recording later. <laughs> <laughs> Not trying to get canceled, you know? Uh, I know. All right, so, cocktailers. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Thank you guys so much for listening. Just want to ask you guys a favor, just getting kicked off. So many people have been asking us to do this podcast. So please do subscribe. And if you've subscribed, go to your podcast app and hit those three little dots to share with your friends, but only friends who like good tea, because the ones who don't care about tea, then like forget them. And don't forget, find us on Instagram at Bravo and Cocktails underscore. And check out the website because some great tea gets put there daily that would get us kicked off of Instagram. (laughs) So thanks for listening, everybody. Bye, guys. See you next time.